This is Sean G. Vibrowinski, and I'm an Applications Engineer for Go Engineer. And today I want to talk to you about detached drawings. Have you ever been in a situation where you wanted to send someone your native SOLIDWORKS drawing, but you didn't want to send them the part files or assembly files that were associated just to make sure that they don't make any changes onto them? Well, SOLIDWORKS has a unique capability in order to handle situations like this. In order to send a native SOLIDWORKS drawing without the attached part files or assembly files, you will need to save your drawing file as a detached drawing. Now, a detached drawing is a standalone document, and in order to set it up, what you'll need to do is you'll come up here to File, and you'll go to Save As. Here, underneath the save type, if you expand that, what you'll notice is you have two different options to save your drawing. You can either save it as a drawing or a detached drawing. If I select detached drawing from here, it still saves it as an SLD DRW, so there's no real way to distinguish it um, when you're looking at it to where you're saving it. So right now, just for this purpose, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this. I'll just add in detached to the end of this just so that I know which one I'm looking for. And I'm gonna go ahead and save this to a flash drive so I can send it to my vendor. Now, once I've done that, I'll go ahead and close out of this drawing and I'm gonna open up the detached drawing. Now, when you're looking at this drawing, it might not seem any different. We see that the model loads up here correctly, uh, but there are a couple key things that you wanna look out for to see if you're actually ever looking at a detached drawing. If you look over to the left-hand side on the feature tree here inside of the drawing, um, what you'll notice is a lot of these icons for what you're looking at has this little broken up oval attached to it. And this is just letting you know that all of these features with the inside of this drawing have been d detached. They don't have the model loaded within there, so we can still look at the file as is. So keep an eye out for this little broken oval to let you know that you are actually working in a detached drawing. If you don't see that, you're working in a normal drawing and you'll have to save out for that. Now, in a detached drawing, um, I still have some functionality that I can actually utilize when I open this up inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, if I wanted to go in and add in any dimensions that I might deem as missing, I can go ahead and select this edge and then add in the dimension that I see right here. So I'm also utilizing add-ins such as SOLIDWORKS inspection to generate my inspection documentation. I can actually put that information here on this detached drawing as well, just by activating the add-in and going through the normal process. And you can see that what it's going through is it recognizes all of those dimensions there and adds in the necessary bubbles for me to work with. Now, the reason I can add in information like this onto this detached drawing is because there are some operations built with inside of a SOLIDWORKS drawing that don't require the model. Um, a few examples of that is if we want to if we want to add in anything like a dimension, an annotation, um, if we need new auxiliary views um, for parts, or if we wanted to add in balloons and virtual sharps, things like that, those can be added in here on a detached drawing. Now, if you wanted to change certain things within the drawing, you're limited onto that. Um, things that you can change are the scales of the sheets or the specific views. If you wanted to change line colors, uh, view alignments, auxiliary views, and balloons, you're more than welcome to change those. And then we can also select certain things. So if you want to be able to select hidden lines removed, section view edges, model edges, faces, things like that, we have the ability to select those. And we can also do things like update the drawing with the rebuild tool. We can measure true dimensions and view temporary accesses within our detached drawing. Now, if you ever wanna go in and make a modification to an existing dimension, you'll notice if I double click on this dimension right here, I'm gonna be brought up with this text that says this operation requires the external model to be loaded. Would you like to load this model? Uh, this will be brought up so that you need to physically load 
the actual part file. Now, if you didn't send them the part file, um, they're not going to be able to do this operation. But if you have the part file locally, then you can load up the model here and then make any necessary changes that you need to. Now, to make any changes on your detached drawing, um, a few operations that require the model are things like importing design tables, as well as model items and reference planes and accesses that didn't exist on the previous drawing that you had before. If you also wanted to add in new views and new views of like parts and assemblies or create bill of materials and cosmetic threads, you'll have to have the physical model for that. And the same thing when you're trying to select components from your shortcuts menu. And then if you need to change any property values, if you want to use a dim expert tool, or even hide and show components that we might utilize for tricks on assemblies um, in order to create specific views or details that we need on our drawings. All of that requires the actual model and we'll need to make sure that we send that to the person if they're going to be making changes like that. This is Chandra Vavramunski and I hope you enjoyed this video on how to create detached drawings and what you can do with those detached drawings as well. Mm -hmm.